first go to Settings, then go to Integration and select Database Options. You can create a new database connection or edit an existing one. We are going to edit it. You can choose what type of database you need. Then you need to enter the server name and the database name we will be working on. Click on Verify Connection to make sure you are connected to your database and click OK. And now let's create our form. On Settings, click on Forms and add new form. Enter your form name and click OK. Now that we have created our form, let's add some fields to it. We'll start by adding a drop-down. Let's name it Products. In order to add items to it from the database, make sure you check the database query and click Import. Here you will see the database connection to the server. In this field, we can insert any query that will link to your database server and add in the items we want from it. We'll start with a simple function to bring back data. In this function, we can add elements from a table and columns that correspond to the selected table. Click the plus button to add the selected element to the function. You can press the play button to verify if your query string is working in preview area. Click OK and click Save and Exit. The form is created and it is visible on the right side of the screen. Click Refresh button on our form. You will notice that the product elements have been brought back from the server into our dropdown. Now we'll create more complex queries that are linked to other items in the forms. Let's create another dropdown and name it Size. Click the database query and click Import. We'll write in our query and tell the app what elements to bring back from the database. Remember to use the drop-down to browse through and add tables and columns within your database. You can also add conditions to your functions by adding items from the database and you can insert values from the form you have just created into the query. Click Play button to preview the query. Now, when you select any product, the drop-down refreshes and shows you all the values for the size of that product. Let's create more form fields. We'll need a drop-down for length. Enter your query strings. We will need to make the length value show up based on the size and product type. Let's try it out. Notice that the length value updates based on your product type and size selection. If we change only the size, the length value will get updated too. We will add another drop-down for bundle pieces and we will do the same process as before.
Now, when selecting a different value, for example, from length, the drop-down below will update according to it. We set up our form to bring back data from a database. Now let's add a feature to update the number of items that we want that we count in our stock. Go back to forms and add in a text box fields. We'll name it stock. Check it with sync with database option and click on edit database query. We will now enter our query string to bring back the stock value from our database. Preview our query to make sure it works. Now select a different product and you will see all fields including the stock will refresh. If you select a different value from any of the drop downs, you will notice that the drop downs below will update according to it too. Now, we would like to update the stock value when we count. Go back to Forms and add a Database Action button. Let's name it Update Stock. You can choose to sync it with the Save button. This will execute the button's action when you save a counted photo. In this case, you can also hide it. Now click on the Edit Database Query button and enter your querying string. Save your form. Now let's open an image. Choose the appropriate drop-down values for the opened image. Click on Count. Now click the Update Stock button and you will see the stock value add up.